Hello, I'm Finley Robertson. Welcome to Advanced Talent Podcast. Please like and subscribe to the channel. Hello. Hiya. How are you? Yeah, good, thanks. You all right? I'm all right. I'm not too bad. Yeah. Not too bad. Busy morning. Apologies for the um, uh, confusion with all the, um, you know, timing and everything. That's but right. I, uh, yes, I made an, I made a mistake. But I'm here now. <laughs> Thank you for uh, coming on. Anyway, not how's, at all. Not at how's all. How's the um, the house? The rebuild is that all done? The house right? is all right. I was uh, I was driving to the dump with a load of um, uh, cardboard oh, when okay. I uh, when I realised my error, uh, yeah. and then uh, I made it back in time. And yeah, all good, all good. <laughs> is it all complete then? Was it a full house rebuild? Or uh, it, it was a, no. It was a couple of bathrooms. Oh, okay, Re-trab, and uh, yeah. a kitchen. And then one thing led to another. But yeah, it's, it, these things always take longer than expected. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm, I, as my job, I'm a property maintenance, so uh, I deal with stuff like that okay. daily. Yeah. 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 yeah it's, uh, yeah, you open a can of worms uh, and then you, you want to do the next thing and the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. So, yeah. Yes. Not ideal, but it looks great. We're home now and we're just kind of unpacking ourselves. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Enjoying the weather as well. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to have a shower after this, get my shorts on. Lovely. Weekend has begun. Cool. Well, well yeah, thanks for coming on. Um, Not just going to ask you a few questions, basically, for the podcast. Um, OK, so, so to start, how with, are you recording? Are you recording picture and sound or what? Uh, well, I started, a, I started a, a screen record on here. I tested it and I'm hoping, it okay, will just, that's cool. I'm hoping yeah. it will just record. But I've also got um, a recorder next to the phone, which will record. Yeah, just 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 All for right, voice. Cool. So hopefully that will work as well. OK, um, one or the other will work. Let me just um, I'll, I want to be looking at myself the whole time. Um, marvellous. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Good to go. <laughs> cool. Let's do it. Yeah. Cool. So yeah, the first question was basically um, where you was born, where you grew up, and um, and what was it like growing up? Yeah. Well, I, I grew up in Chester, in the northwest of England. Okay. I um, my parents are from Glasgow, and my dad worked in Chester. Okay. And I was born uh, mid to late nineteen seventies. <laughs> yeah. So near. In between, in case Manchester, Liverpool, and the Welsh border, okay. and uh, yeah, it was very nice, kind of normal childhood. Went to a nice school, and then yeah, yeah. you know, and then went to uni, and then just kind of got on with 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 stuff, got on with my life. Yeah, oh, okay. So I, I read online um, you was born in New Zealand. Was that um, is that not correct? Or I was born in the Netherlands. It's a grad to great Chinese whispers. I wasn't born in New Zealand. I was born in the Netherlands. Okay. Um, yeah, my dad was working there at the time, so I was born in Holland. Oh, okay. But I enjoy that. I, I enjoy that that mistake. How <laughs> the Netherlands has suddenly become New Zealand. That's very um. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. amusing. Okay. Um. So yeah, second question is um. Just how how what made you want to become an actor, writer, um, and why did you choose this path? Basically, it was basically just doing stuff at school. I did loads of stuff. I did loads of plays at school. I'd always mm-hmm. kind of been a bit of a show off, and I I. I didn't join a drama group, but I um I went to uh, a school where there was a really nice drama department and, and kind of teachers who were who were into it and who wanted to um encourage us all. And I just got offered parts in plays and yeah. then I did loads and loads and loads and then I went to uni mm-hmm. and then I just did more and more plays there and then went to Edinburgh and then it became something that I realized I wanted to do and then I 
I did a show in Edinburgh in the late nineties. Yeah. And then um and then moved got an agent and then moved up to London and just started started it all happening really. Okay. Okay. And what was the what was your family like with doing this? Were they supportive? Were they were yeah, they I think they're a bit, not? you know, I've got kids of my own now. There is a sense of like, are you sure? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And they're obviously always worried because it's not, you know, the most stable career one mm -hmm. could ask for. But I kind of, um, I didn't really realise it at the time, but I was just very determined just to do my own thing and just kind of, yeah, I'll just do it. Yeah. So I just went on and did it. And, and they're really supportive now. And they really, you know, as a parent, I think you're only ever worried about is your child going to be happy and or not in financial ruin and i've just about made it work so yeah it's all good oh cool, cool and then um third question uh what was the first big role you got offered and how 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 did it feel getting offered such like a big role yeah i think a lot of the time when you're young you don't really realize kind of how big a deal something is i got a got my first telly when i was sort of early 20s and i didn't really realize and then I um and then I got a show. I did a play at the Royal Court when I was still pretty pretty young, mid twenties. Yeah. And I didn't really realise, you know, and I was working with great actors and it was, you know, playing to a sold out house at the Royal Court in London every night. Yeah, yeah. Doing a really exciting play. And I guess you don't really realise. And I think the minute you become kind of that self aware. I mean, I don't believe in this idea of a big break or anything. You just do jobs after jobs after jobs and then just see where you end up. And I yeah. um, and, and and that's kind of. It, it's more about you can never you never know either where, you know, the big part or a big break or where, what, 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 that it's going to be that. Yeah. Um. so, yeah, it's been about successively working and working and working and just looking for work and, and getting work. That's be really what it's been about, you know, yeah. throughout yeah, my career. Yeah. How did you find um, theatre work? Is it quite exhausting, like doing nightly shows and et cetera? Great. I mean, it's great. It's the best. I mean, I think they say that every, when you're doing a play, you always lose weight because this is all this nervous energy, yeah. but it is, it is the best thing. And having that immediate connection with an audience every night is absolutely fantastic. There's nothing like it. Okay. So yeah, I do love doing theatre. I haven't done it in a while. I haven't done it since COVID. Yeah, but um, yeah, I would love to do another play again. Yeah, yeah, okay. So you've done so much TV and movies over the years. Um, which one would you say stands out the most and had the most fun uh, doing? I think, it, um... I think, I mean, it, it sort of, it's really the job that kind of means the most to you in terms of um, the time you have making it, the fun you have making it, and then um. I've done plays that sort of nobody has seen, but it was, when I, we, it was, you know, I did a, it was sold out, but it was a small theater. And that was uh, a show called Toast that was about eight years ago. That was just great. Yeah. Because we were playing, it was a really, a really happy atmosphere. This play was great. The cast were great. We were just really good. Um, and that sort of thing. And then um, it's mainly been theater stuff that sticks with you because you have, the cast you have the cast with you the whole time and you have that audience connection but in terms yeah. of telly i mean obviously doctor who was a big thing and and i didn't realize it at the time but it was the a thing that lived on afterwards um and yeah. still lives on with people wanting to um know more about it and you see really the the way how much connection you have with uh with people who are fans of the shows yeah and then uh, I did a, I did, I played a re, at a character I really enjoyed playing in a show that was was not on for very long called Body Farm, where I was a, it was about a sort of forensic, um, forensic crime solving kind of show, and yeah. uh, I just had a really fun playing that character, um, and yeah, though when you make the character work, and you have a fun time doing it, those are the those are the best experiences. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm I'm a big Doctor Who fan myself. Um, so it's lovely seeing you. One of my favourite episodes, Blink. Um, what was it like? Um, and what what was the feeling like being asked to be on such a big show like that? Yeah, you kind of. I I didn't realise how big a show it was, and to be fair, I don't think it was that 
massive a show or I certainly wasn't aware of it. It's certainly not the show it is now in terms of it's that, that what it is now it, since the kind of the reboot has really mm-hmm. re, has really built and built and built and it wasn't as massive then as it was now. Yeah. Um I was just aware I got the audition and then I did it and then you know it, it worked and um when filming it I was aware that the script was really good but I was I couldn't really tell that it was going to be the big deal that it became until I saw it and then and this was pre Twitter well if it if Twitter existed it didn't um I wasn't on it but it was a pre social media that we have today yeah and it was just a kind of word of mouth thing and I got a sense from and then more and more people told me how much they enjoyed it and and again it was just a really fun character to play and a really nice experience making it so yeah. you know that was all it was and then over time obviously it's it's become what it is so yeah yeah okay so uh my son uh riley yesterday is asked to ask for a, a few questions to you okay how old's um, your son he's 10 years old yeah so he's right, uh, okay. he, he's a huge doctor who fan as well probably because uh me letting him watch it and uh just getting him involved with it because right. i'm a fan and then he's just he just loves it now so um his first question was what was it like working beside david tennant and are you a doctor who fan have you watched the show in the past yeah i mean i was a fan as a kid i was probably a fan i watched it when i was his age and my mm-hmm. first doctor who was tom baker okay and then peter davidson mm-hmm. um and they meant a lot to me and weirdly i, I worked with them both later on i was in a play with peter davison okay playing his son and then i did um some work for big finish with uh tom baker yeah yeah and it was amazing to kind of meet this childhood icon yeah yeah um but i hadn't really engaged with it massively since the reboot and and i part of the way it was shot was there was always one episode every series where the doctor wasn't in it because they would shoot two episodes at the same time yeah and this was that episode which is why he's not in it. And I, I met a David and he was just really nice. And mm-hmm. then I met him on quite early on. And then we met him right at the very end where we shot the scene outside the uh, the DVD shop. And yep. that was when I got a real sense of, oh, the noise around him and the um, uh, the attention that he was getting. And it was, it was just lovely. He's a very, very, very nice guy. Yeah, yeah. So that episode, he's not in it quite, not a lot, is it? It's more focused on you no. and... Um... And um Carrie. Um Carrie Mulligan, yeah. So um did you did you watch any of the episodes before you went on it? Did you watch any of the new rebooted before you went on it to get a, I didn't, no, I just kind of read the script and then I just kind of went for it and I just yeah. kind of, you know, we would just see uh just kind of saw how it would uh I didn't it didn't it wasn't gonna be sort of helpful to me. It just would have might have made me more nervous or yeah. kind of more uh I'd rather just, you know, it was all on the page and I just kind of got on with it. <laughs> um, if you was to return to the show, what villain would you like to face next? I'd probably unfinished business with the Weeping Angels. I think that would be my thing. Although I'd always yeah. have, I mean, I'd love a go at a Dalek. Uh, but just because they were terrifying for me as a kid, I really found them scary. Yeah. But yeah, probably I'd go back to the Weeping Angels and sort of kind of, uh keep going back to that you know um yeah struggle with them again i think uh i think everyone loves a dalek um i'm more of a cyberman and obviously riley my son is is weeping angels because just obviously he loves right. blink and the reboots and just yeah um so next question how did the role come about for the doctor who game the lonely assassin they just got in touch with me. I got an email from somebody saying, We're, we, we'd like to do this. So would you be up for it? And I said, yeah, sure. And it was kind of, it was nice in a way to kind of, you know, find the voice again and go back to him and who he was. And um, yeah, they, they, I just got, and I, I didn't know anything about it. And I, you know, I, I, you know, was given some information. There was lots of it was kind of top secret. And then we just filmed, it was just while COVID was on, actually, it was, it wasn't, huge lockdown we were just coming out of lockdown yeah and we filmed it filmed that stuff in in east london somewhere oh, okay. and um yeah it was really it was a really nice couple of days nice um what was it like working with uh kerry mulligan 
Yeah, it was lovely. I mean, I could tell she was, you know, you could see how good she was. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, she was just kind of starting out. She was just, she'd done a bit of telly and she was about to do a play at the Royal Court, which was really good for her. And she was kind of, uh, she was about to do the seagull and she was sort of in between takes reading the play text, you know, and, and getting her head around that. Um, and she was just lovely. She was, she was just really nice. And then we sort of saw each other afterwards. We went and did a kind of Q&A or a kind of behind the scenes Doctor Who thing. Mm-hmm. And we were kind of texting each other and going, what what, what do we say? What do we <laughs> say? Um, but uh, yeah, she's lovely. Lovely. Um, would you return to the show in the future as uh, Larry Nightingale? Oh, I'd love to. Yeah. I mean, it's sort of. It's such a well drawn out character and knowing as well what that character meant to the audience. Mm-hmm. I've always said it feels a real privilege to um, to play a character who's um, thought of with such affection by by all the fans. It really it really means a lot. And you're kind of aware of uh, the importance of the show and the character and the stories holds to people mm-hmm. um so yes I'd, I'd love to i'd love to i mean he's just you know he's just a really well a really clearly defined character and i really enjoyed playing him so yeah. i'd love to they just just call me up and we'll make it work <laughs> that's it yeah um was the weeping angels on set models or played by actors because he, he wasn't sure if they were cgi it was a mixture or of both it was a mixture of both there were sort of four models and then I think there were three or four um artists who were brilliant. I think they were either circus performers or mm-hmm. dancers or um mime artists and they were just incredible in terms of their precision and their ability to hold a posi- uh, hold the position for a long period of time. Yeah. Um so yeah it was a mixture of both. I bet that was quite scary with it just an angel just moving about right next to you. Yeah it was a <laughs> bit odd. But then once you see it once, it kind of loses its magic. And of course, all the the drama and all the terror and all the fear is made in the cut, the way they shot the episode. Mm-hmm. So we would shoot this stuff and it'd be really still. And then we, and then when it was all put together, when I saw that sequence for the first time, I was like, oh, I get it. And it was um, it was really well done and really and really scary. Yeah. OK. Um, was you given anything from set that you was allowed to keep? No, it, they were very, 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 very strict. Uh, and there was a, a level of secrecy that I wasn't aware of when I um, uh, when I started. Uh, the only thing I got was a couple of photos of me inside the, um, the TARDIS that was done in a way that you have kind of wardrobe continuity and they take photos of you after each scene just so that they know for the what the wardrobe is to match it with the next time you're in or the next time you shoot something oh, okay and they said we'll just do a couple of quite wide photos so it was me inside the, and then they would print them out and they just hand them to me secretly because there was oh. a lot of um yeah we couldn't we wouldn't be allowed to take anything yeah it's all, sounds, it's sounds all amazing anyway but with the very, photos. very top secret yeah <laughs> um how does it feel to be in an episode of doctor who that is considered by many fans their favorite episode ever. Like I said, it, it I feel a real privilege mm-hmm. and a real it just feels really nice. I mean, again, you sort of it's not it's it's an actor's dream to sort of have a uh, a piece or a or a part, a character that connects and is um memorable and considered uh and held dearly by 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 fans. I mean, that's just the greatest privilege and the greatest gift. So it just feels it feels lovely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so back to my questions. Um, you've done a lot of voice acting. Could you tell me a little bit more about this and how do you find it compared to TV? Um, it's a different discipline. I've done lots of audio books and I do lots of um, you know, voiceover work in general. I think it, it it's a different it's a different medium. So you just have to find a way of making it work. I mean, if you're doing a, an audio book, I sort of 
I always imagine I'm just telling the story to one person. I've got that one person in mind as I'm reading the story. Yeah. And I do really enjoy that. It is quite hard work. You have to get kind of fit for it because you're just talking solidly for sort of six hours a day. Yeah. Um, but uh, the, you know, as, as a genre, it's, it, it's great fun and it allows you to, to play lots of different roles and do lots of different things because it's just the power of your voice. It's not how you look. You can play an alien or a uh you know or you know you can voice the, a, a woman or you can do all these other things so there's a lot of creative possibility there yeah. that makes it um really exciting okay so with the audio box do you do that from home like in a or do you go to a yeah studio? i do like a lot of actors i got hold of a um a microphone and kind of built a studio mm -hmm. you know and made myself soundproof and like you, know, you learn how to do it and yeah i do a lot of that from home i go to studios now and again but um yeah that's the other thing you can work from home yeah and make it really sort of straightforward okay um i've read on on your website that you now teach and i've been doing this for quite some years um what made you get into this and how do you find it uh I wanted to, I realized that, that I knew a lot and I wanted to share it. And I, I, in my sort of journey, I've, I've had teachers that I've worked with both at school in terms of academic stuff, but also in terms of, of acting uh, that have really meant a lot to me. And I, I realized that, that I knew more than I thought I did. And I got involved in a drama school and I teach there and I really enjoy watching the um the development of the actors mm -hmm. over a period of time it really means a lot and yeah, i get a real buzz out of seeing people uh grow and understand and then kind of um you know go further in their in their career i've worked with a, an actress who's now making loads of really really great tv she's been cast and just shot a, a lead in a netflix show and um yeah it feels it just feels really good it, it makes it's that thing where you you do something for someone else mm -hmm. and the feeling it gives you is 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 really um it's just really nice yeah yeah so do you do that from home as well yeah i teach online although i do have people come and work with me kind of privately and or i'll go to them or or yeah yeah, yeah. so i teaching is is a thing I really enjoy doing now in between the acting work. Yeah. Okay. So um, I follow Comic-Con events on social media. Um, I see you've got one coming up next Saturday. Um, I do. Yeah. Next Saturday, I'm in Coventry. Yeah. So um, how how do you find the, the the conventions and what's your favorite part about attending them? Again, it's, it's that thing of just... Uh meeting the fans and realizing that there is a whole community mm -hmm. uh who support this world and who for whom it means so much and that is really affirming and really really nice yeah um yeah that that's it really and seeing people who who are really pleased to see you and talk about what the show and the character means to them is just it's just really really nice yeah lovely we're we're actually going to one tomorrow we're going to the london film one tomorrow which will okay be, will be great my uh Ms. who Bunch. are you seeing who's going to be there so matt smith's going to be there um and just okay the old cast but we're um we're actually having a well i'm not my, my um my son's having a photo with matt smith um he doesn't actually know yet he knows we're going but um i said right. we, might, we might be able to get matt smith it's quite expensive but i booked it a while ago so i'll tell him on the day um but that that's his favorite doctor Matt smith so he's going to be over over the moon right. tomorrow amazing you yeah. made up brilliant yeah have a good one have a, have a great day <laughs> um so another question do you have any hobbies that you enjoy doing any hobbies yeah well i've got a family so i have i i don't have a tremendous amount of time i look after them a lot but i play um i used to play a fair bit of cricket uh -huh. and i i'm just getting into that now so i play cricket um and I like listening to music, uh, sort of American guitar music is my has always been my thing. So, yeah, they're the two things that yeah. keep me going. OK, cool. Um, just one last question, then. Um, what advice would you give for anyone that wants to become an actor or struggling to progress in their career path? 
Yeah, I think someone asked me this the other day, and I think I said the thing is to to find who or what inspires you and then just work out a way to be working with them, hanging out with them, making work with them. Yeah. So, you know, if you're really into British films, see all the British films you can and then and then contact the people who make these British films and try and work out how they can see you and stuff so you can you can be considered to be in that world. If it's the theatre, there's different kinds of theatre, different types of theatre, whatever it is, find a way of um, uh, spending time or getting involved in that community who makes who make all that yeah and then um and then and then let that be cr creatively fulfilling in itself the idea that you become an actor to make money or be successful or be famous is is really the not not the way to go about it it's yeah. it's all about the art yeah and um uh and and then if you if if you can't make it then then find a way of making it yourself i mean there's there's hundreds of examples throughout mm -hmm. history of people of actors and artists who have had not had the opportunities they wanted or rather have just gone well i'm just going to i'm just going to make my own stuff and then and then and then you you just see how it goes and you see by making your own stuff you're taking control of your own creativity and whatever happens you will make the work that you want to make yeah and um those are the things that i would say to focus on mm -hmm. So was there any actors or movies that inspired you when you was younger growing up? I mean, I was I was always inspired by Star Wars and Raiders of the Lost Ark. And then um, when I got a bit older, it was all uh, it was um, it was Tarantino as a, as a teenager. It was like the, the energy and the excitement of that. Yeah. Really got me. going. Um, yeah. Those were the things. Those, those were my ins in terms of kind of people who inspired me and and uh made me excited and then you know scorsese and, and goodfellas remains one of my um favorite films of all time and yeah, and that's that, cool. that was a thing that you know really kind of got me going when i was starting watching films and studying what what it meant what filmmaking meant i suppose oh cool. all right well, um, thank you for ask, answering all my questions. It's been uh, it's been an You're honor welcome. to speak with you. Um, not at all, yeah. not at all. Thank you again for coming on the show uh, and speaking with me. You're welcome. Me. You're welcome. And um, please yeah. let me know when the show is on, and I can um, I, tell me when it's on and and let me know. Yeah, drop me a line. Yeah, once I once I've completed it, I'll um, I'll send you the link because um, I normally put it on my YouTube as well, even if it's just a podcast. I'll just put it on my YouTube yeah. with just uh, just a picture of the guest. Um, but I'll send you the link and you can check it out. Please. All right. I'll spread it all over my socials. All right. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank You're you. Welcome. Thank you for your time right. anyway. You're welcome. Have a lovely day. You and enjoy too. tomorrow. Thank you. See you, mate. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.